Okay. Let's go ahead and start the video for the Greater Rift. Hello, this is Debo. Thank you guys for checking out the Rhino for a little bit. We're going to climb the Greater Rift on this video. If you guys haven't seen my other tutorial video, I'll put a uh, the analytics or whatever they call it or the little square box thing or whatever so you guys can click that and get linked to the actual guide about the rhino flailer build and what the current meta is going on and how to get ready for yourself uh... i went over everything about the rhino flailer build in the other video so check that out and inside that description there is a link to the guide this is just me to show off on the ptr level thirty four or i'm sorry show off the rhino flailer build and i hope to get to the floor is level thirty four or higher to keep it real simple, we're running the Ogdo's shoulders, the chest, and the bracers, all of which you can craft. We're going with poison, so we roll poison on that. We also have Jerom and Tasker and Theos, Swamp Lauders, Rhino Flailer, and also Ukapi and Serpent. We also got the Blackthorns boots, which we're going to be using later in combination with the bell, but at lower levels we're going to use the Witching Hour because we get more damage. Now the only thing that's different is that this Unity Ring, I went ahead and rolled a socket on it to get the 25% increase hit chance, oh, I'm sorry, 25, I'm sorry, 25 chance on hit to increase your attack speed by 2% for 3 seconds stacking up to 10 times so it's going to be 20% attack speed increase at level 50 you also gain 2% cooldown reductions per stack that is extremely powerful for Rhino Flailer because Rhino Flailer uses toads and you need a lot of attack speed more attack speed means more toads more damage more CC and the other one I'm using of course is on the tall man's finger increase critical hit chance of your pets by 20% and eventually at level 50 we're going to get that so we get our pets are unkillable which is going to be fantastic and then of course Lee, this one I heard is currently bugged I heard it's a hundred percent chance on the smite but we're going to use it anyway because it combos really well <coughs> with our uh, rhino flailer build 15 percent chance on hit to smite a nearby enemy for 100 percent weapon damage is holy later on we might want to switch it out for 50 percent of our damage is taken and staggered and dealt over three seconds that might be pretty good or we might even want to run increase the damage of primary skills but for all intents and purposes right now we're going to use the <coughs> the gem that gives the smite chance so uh Pretty much straightforward. We got the double unity combo going on here. Me and the Enchantress. She got a furnace and everything, and she got a lot of attack speed to make her attack fast, so that you know she basically triggers the furnace as fast as she can, as much as possible. And then, like I said, the biggest damage mitigators would have been, like I just said, the unity ring, and then of course the Ukape and Serpent making our dog absorb damage. <coughs> now that we have that all explained, let's go ahead and do the rift. Now you want to run these as fast as possible in the earlier stages because you want to skip. You don't want to waste more time in the dungeon than you have to. So these first entry levels are going to be kind of crazy. Things shouldn't start slowing down to like level 30. And as long as you pay this bill common collectively, you'll be able to rank up very fast. I do believe on the movement speed I'm running, I think I am running Fierce Loyalty. We're going to switch up our passives a little bit later once we get the higher difficulty. No, the smite gym doesn't proc fetishes. That's fine because we got the rhino flailer. The rhino flailer procs the fetishes. Somebody just asked me in the stream that it, uh, smite doesn't proc fetishes, which is okay. We're just procking it for it's. It's nice because it's just extra damage. And I even think I forgot to change my passives because I don't have any. Nope, I got pa I got fetishes generating. I did the right passives. Like I said, level 1 is real easy. If you can get it with about 10 minutes left, it'll skip you to level 10. Always pick up those purple orbs because they make your meter go up. Now, I will say this. I know there is currently an error on the PTR that allows for when pets to die, uh, it makes the progress meter go up. I'm not really too worried about this. The main thing I'm just trying to show is that how monsters start hitting really higher and higher level torments to show what goes on in the higher level, uh, I'm sorry, not torments, higher level gr uh, greater rift, how hard the monsters hit, and just how efficient the Rhino Collider build is in terms of just being able to mitigate all the damage and, uh, well, in terms of using the Adeline Toads for CC and generating fetish, how well it works. And that little little lightning bolt you see down, that's the smite gem. Some people say it's bugged. I kind of believe them. It procs 100% of the time. But even with that, I mean, the 20% proc rate, or 15% it's supposed to be, it's still going to proc a lot. 
Now, if you go ahead and take a look and you see a little pink box, that's the uh, little artwork they haven't put in yet for the increased attack speed gym, which works really well with the final player build. And I know it doesn't seem like it's getting up to 10 stacks muscle once we get to higher levels and mobs have more HP. We'll pretty much have that permanent 20% up all the time. Need more time. We almost got the bar all the way full up. Pop raffle. Really don't need to, but of course I have it. Make sure you always pick these up in uh, the Greater Rifts. They make a big difference. Got to get that meter to go up so you can beat the timer. Uh, increased fetish army damage does not benefit the ones from the passing. Somebody just asked that in the stream. And at the lower levels, it's kind of boring, but once you get to higher levels, that's when the greater risks start to become a lot more fun and frustrating. You might even see me curse or go nuts in this video, but hopefully not. Now, maybe in a couple days or so, I will do a run where I use my, uh, <clears throat> whatchamacallit, uh, Jade said build. I don't know why it took me so long. I need to drink my coffee. And showcase how that's doing on the greater tier rifts. It's actually doing quite well and very competitive because it doesn't rely on pets. Because, like I said, a lot of people are having a problem with their pets dying. And since you get that level one gym that basically can eventually be upgraded till it gets to the chance or to level 50 where it makes it to a point where it makes it so your pets are invulnerable or they never die until you get that level 50 there's not much you can do yeah I'll show the legendary gym as soon as I get out of here once we have that 30 second in between time with the rifts going down and closing and opening and what have you now so like I said sorry everything is exploding but lower levels is really not that entertaining you just kind of just going through the motions. You just trying to move as fast as possible so you can skip that, skip as many levels as possible. Rift Guardian should be coming up soon. I think I got a good time. We'll see. Maybe I can skip to floor ten. I don't think ten. I'll probably end up getting eight or nine. There's a Rift boss, and that's what we call a Mallet Lord. Those things destroy pets. So just so you guys know, you got to be wary of those with your pet build because that can end a run. And we got the floor 8, which is reasonable, and we got another swamp water. That doesn't really matter. Okay. Drop the ledges on the floor. Gym. Don't need the potions. Close down art. This is the gym I was talking about. It increases pet critical chance by 20%, and at level 50... When you get the ranks upgraded on the gym, uh, your pets are unkillable. And what for people tell me, you get 1% increased chance per level. And the only way to upgrade these gyms is at the end of your rift run when you couldn't finish a rift and you kill the rift guardian. Then there's supposed to be this magical gym guy who appears out of nowhere who upgrades your gym, but I heard he's been bugged because he can't upgrade gyms which is in your gear, which is weird because you want to use those gyms right away. So I'm sure Blizzard will get it figured out. Now we're on floor 8. Open up the rift. Material. It's been interesting to see level. all of these places where you done. Brave the rifts, and you will be well rewarded. You just keep upgrading them over and over again until they get to level 50. I don't know what the cost of them are. I don't know what you have to do, but you just keep upgrading them. Ooh, a lot of mobs. Need more time. Well, it doesn't matter too much if it doesn't work on the ones that prop from passive. That could just be a bug and stuff like that. But also, I don't care because as long as my zombie dog's alive, I don't care if my fetish just died. Because as long as I can land hits with my um, Rhino Flailer build, because somebody said, well, Debo, they don't work with the ones that are in passive. The reason why the unkillable is so strong, it's really good for your raffle protector and good for your zombie dog. Your zombie dog's your main killer on single target enemies. 
And the fetishes, you can always generate up 15 fetishes because you got the increased attack speed gem. So I'm not too worried about that. But as long as my zombie dog stays alive, that's all I care about. Hmm, at this rate, maybe I'm predicting 16. I might get skipped to 16 if I'm lucky. Probably 14, maybe. Ooh, got Maestress. Ooh, Trifecta Maestress. Alright, and like I said, this is really not really challenging until we get to the higher level floor, so we're just moving around just trying to clear as much as we can as fast as we can so we can skip levels. I don't know if it like, takes a long time to upgrade to level 50. Honestly, I haven't started upgrading him yet. I have to actually see him. I haven't seen him yet. You can only, uh, right now, which is, I hope they change this, they need to make them permanent in town or something, but having them only appear at the integrator rifts is kind of silly. Okay, <laughs> The greater roofs are a way to rank yourself against other people and get special rewards, which are the legendary gems. It's just a way just to rank competitively against your people of your class and other people and stuff. If you participate inside of Seasons, you will have to restart your character over from level 1. This is so boring, I'm doing this with one hand. Everything just dies. Yeah, I know, but all I'm saying is that I'm not saying a duel that it's not us going on. You're not listening to what I'm saying. What I'm saying is it's a stupid concept to have the guy who upgrades your gems only appear after you fail a greater rip. Now, whether you, if you only have a chance to upgrade it, that's not the point. It's not the point. We don't care about the crafting mats. If it costs crafting mats, if it costs money, we don't care. If it's only a chance, we don't care. But only having that dude show up when, like you finish a greater rift is kind of stupid by blizzard's part they should just have them be an npc inside of the inside of the uh area and then maybe you spend gold or you spend crafting mats to upgrade it or maybe they drop you a crafting mat and then you take him to him in town and he gives you a chance to roll uh to upgrade the jewel but right now it's kind of silly that you have to only way to upgrade is like if you fail the greater rift no, gems only drop one time. Once you get a gem, they will never drop again. The same kind. You're going to get one of each kind. Okay. Almost got enough. Rift boss will be popping soon. Probably only get to like 12. I'm thinking 8, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, I'll probably end up getting 12. Yeah, I'm going to play Seasons, but I don't think Blizzard's going to release Seasons right when Patch 2.1 comes out. Exactly. Like, if you finish a high level rift and you finish, they give you this legendary crafting recipe. You go to him in town and he has a chance of upgrading your gym. I just hate the fact that you actually have to. Oh, I got to 15. Very nice. I didn't expect I could skip that much. Just because waiting to having to fail a greater rift just doesn't make sense to me. That's all I'm saying. So hopefully we, we did a pretty good time there. We skipped from 8 to 15, skipped 7 levels. Hopefully we can go 15 to maybe 23. I don't know. We'll go ahead and close this up.
I don't need to switch any gear out yet because it's not that difficult. And we're just going to keep it moving. Yeah, if you die with a hardcore character inside of a rift, you die permanently. Mm. Ooh, that's a League of Legends video. I'll watch that later. Level 15, guys. Let's go. Are you ready? Then you'll try. Here we go. <laughs> now you start seeing the monsters are re uh, taking a little bit longer to kill now. But still, they die very fast, so we're not worried about it. So we're still going to run Fierce Loyalty at this level. Need more time. Yeah, parkour is play safe. Unless you don't mind dying. Especially in Greater Risk, because Greater Risk is crazy. Needs more time. Uh, no one knows when the patch is going to release, but they have a lot of glitches. I don't think the patch is going to be... I think the patch will come out right before BlizzCon, September, October. And I don't think seasons are going to start till January 2015. So they'll just let us do tier rifts and stuff like that and greater rifts and shit like that until they're ready to release seasons, I'm thinking. But Blizzard has a lot of bugs to fix. I mean a shitload of bugs to fix before this goes live. Because after... The gyms are actually having... You know, the gyms are procking things in wrong ways. They're not working as intended. So after they fix all these gyms and they're actually working correctly, then they got to balance the gyms based on maybe this gym just works too well. And then after they do all that, then they got to balance skills and gear sets and all that kind of stuff. And then after they get all that done, then they still have to deal with seasons. So it's a lot of stuff on Blizzard's plate. We'll see. We just have to wait. Yeah, I know the legendary account. I should keep track of that, but I'm just doing PTR right now. The legendaries don't matter, but technically, I think I'm like at 12. Yeah, I, don't know. I did do those carry runs for about four to five hours straight, so that I probably got around about 20, 25 to 30 legendaries. But legendaries drop like candy now, so eh, you know, I don't keep too track, too much track of it. And like I said, we're dispatching of everything pretty easily. Nothing too difficult here. J build and pet build are neck and neck because the J build doesn't depend on the pets to do well and it, it just one shot and does well. So both can do well. The big thing is is whether or not each build has their double unity follower uh, combo. And if they have a furnace, that makes a big deal. So both, both are good. You can do good with pet build. You can do good with uh, J build. But pet users sort of have problems because their pets keep dying. So that's why I was looking at using Rhino Flailer. Plus the new gems are really nice, catered towards the Rhino Flailer build. So I've been using that, and it's been actually very successful in what I've been doing. Ooh, gotta grab these orbs. And the biggest thing about this build is just not to die and just stay very calm. Don't race and go faster than unnecessarily you need to. You just want to just slow and steady, just pass the risk. As long as you get to higher level levels of the re uh, greater rifts, as long as you pass or beat that rift, that all that matters at the end of the day. Yeah, Tasker and Theo does take a little time to get, unfortunately. But you can use Mage Fist till then and run a fire build. Even with Rhino Flailer build, you can use a nice fire build. Time. 
Hmm. Not ready yet. Oh, if you got your task because five on blood charge is very lucky. Toad storm, pretty much. But the smite is working out pretty well. Add extra DPS. What's not to like about extra DPS, right? Ooh, excuse me. So we're just cruising along here, level 15. Hopefully we can skip to probably about 22, 22 starts to get more interesting. I don't really get excited until about floor 30. I will be changing out my gear and spec around level 26, 27. Just to be more survivable and just so I don't lose the RNG bullshit mechanics. Yeah, unfortunately, that's how bad on that forms have kind of deteriorated for now. They're pretty much a shit fire cluster storm of just negative comments. Really bad for uh, encouraging new players to play Witch Doctor or ask questions. I appreciate the follow, man. One nice thing about this ability, don't need the SK for it. Very cool layback build, and most of the stuff you can craft. Jade waters or swamp waters is not that hard to get for poison pans in case you want to go for poison. The hardest part about the any early levels who are going like this on the greater risk with this build is just that you just get bored. Because like, this is very boring right now. It gets more entertaining, guys, when you get the higher levels. You get that adrenaline pumping. Restless Giant Room is really good for the Gargantuan. I think it's just as fun as Raffle. Raffle does more. If you can get a real low cooldown on your Raffle, it's really nice. But Restless Giant is nice as well, too, because you can always have that guy out. He goes crazy when there's five mobsters or more. He goes crazy when there's elites around him. And if you get a low cooldown reduction, you can always just resummon him when you get next to Elite, so he goes into his Fury mode. So I think overall, if you're running a physical build, Restless Giant's fantastic. There's nothing wrong with it, but Raffle Protector will always do more burst and more damage. <laughs> Restless Giant just gives you that more DPS when you're not killing Elites. Raffle Protector is when you need to burn down the Elite or Rift Boss real fast. All right, should be getting the uh, Rift Guardian boss a little soon. We'll see how I think. I think I'll get to 22. I think I'll skip seven. Still have to make him spawn though. Uh oh, this is very bad. I need some more monsters. Woo! Thank goodness, just enough to spawn. RNG things like in that Rift. Like if I would have had to have gone back, that would have lost me a lot of time. At higher levels, that would have been a death sentence. Okay, so we got to 19. We skipped four. Not a big deal. I use a wave of mutilation because you're using Fetus Sycophants to pierce the veil, the zombie dog handler, or the fierce loyalty, and the midnight feast, so you really don't have room enough to run the gra uh, Grave Injustice, so you can run Perinato. Alright, so I'm gonna close this up. I'm gonna use the bathroom real quick, I'll be right back. Alright, let's do level 19. 
Now, if you want to run like a crazy, like, tall man's finger build with fire and just skip through a lot of the earlier levels, you can. But once you get to the higher 20s, then you probably want to revert to the Rhino Flayther build. Ooh, lagging a little bit. Alright, here we go. Oh yeah, if I had the Hellfire Amulet, I would definitely use that. But the problem with the Hellfire Amulet is, is like, is this. Like, it's a good amulet and it provides you an extra passive. Yes, that's great. But once you get to certain higher tiered rifts of the greater rifts, Jailer and Frozen will one-shot you. There's two necklaces, one for Frozen, one for, one for uh, Cold, one for Arcane Damage that absorbs that damage and heals you. So yes, it's great to have the extra passive. You want the Hellfire Ring to be Pierce the Veil so you can run different stuff. But when you get to certain levels, if you don't have that, I think it's called the Countess Julia or whatever necklace, when you get to an in in Jailer a monster, it will instantly one-shot you or half your life and immobilize you. That's why on the PTR I see a lot of Witch Doctors that have that necklace or the cold necklace that they get healed for and then they run that with Ice Climber boots so they cannot be immobilized. Those are very important items at higher level tier rifts because uh, elites get pretty nasty. And what I might imagine in the meta is like if you run across a monster that's arcane, you might actually just run away, teleport back to town, switch out that necklace and get right back into the fight, lose only about 10 seconds of in-game time, just so you can put on that necklace so you're immune to that monster. And then, you know, when you get to the next monster, let's say the next monster is uh, cold damage, and you go back to town, you put on the cold damage necklace, you switch out, then you go back and then you kill him. I think that might even be a meta as well, too. We'll have to wait and see. That's why Wyatt Chang was asking whether or not you think it's okay or it's a viable strategy to go back to town and change your equipment. I don't really don't think so, but that's just how those are the breaks. I believe the gear that you use, you should be able to go inside. You shouldn't have to be, you know, tediously tasked with having to go back in town, switch out one piece of gear to fight an elite on a high level tier, just so you don't get one shot by it. Or maybe they can reach home the rift bosses so their jailer in their uh, cold damage or frozen abilities just doesn't do as much damage. If they did that, then Hellfire definitely would be the best amulet in socket or in slot. But until they figure out a way where you can absorb a lot of damage, just not going to happen. Because it's too much damage. You could do these with one person. You could do it with one person, two people, three, and four. Each have their own individual rankings, but everybody must have a greater rift token in order to open up and go in. Everybody has to use a token. I guarantee you guys it will get a lot more entertaining once we get to the higher level rifts. Go. Yeah, I'm down to like 10 million, but like in a week's time, I can farm about 200 million. I'm not too worried about it. Yeah, you can do it with your brother. You both were in the same rift, and you would be raided in the two the two player team rift. So they have a two player team rift, three player team rift, 14 player rift that's ranked against the world, and also a solo tiered rift. I'm doing solo right now. But yeah, you and your brother can play together. It's going to be pretty cool. You and your brother against the world. Yeah, Legendary Witching Hour is good because Harrington's are useless in Greater Rift. Since there's no chest and nothing to really turn over. But the problem with Witching Hour is finding one that rolls your right primary stats and rolls good stats. Because like a lot of Witching Hours like to troll. A lot of people can tell you that. Mine's rolled decks. I was very sad about that. Well, hopefully next one I get will actually be pretty decent. I'm hoping. Oh, almost skipped these. Woo, don't want to skip those. Purple orbs are good. Make your stuff go up. Make sure uh, you meet it all. Yeah, people need help. People ask questions, so I talk back. I don't want to be one of those streamers that get big and then like you don't talk to your fucking people. Even if I did have like four or five thousand people, I would just try to answer general questions and always just try to talk in a way where it's informative to help people out. So they're like, oh, okay, I can come to this stream and get information about the Witch Doctor class. 
Hexing Pants is a must if you use a Star Metal Kokori build, but if you don't have that, or you don't have all the resources, or you have a, you should go Rhino Flailer, that can get to a high level build. SMK can still get to a very high level build, but it's pretty stressful sometimes. Alright, so we're on floor 19, let's see how, how high we can skip. I imagine 24? 26! Man! That's one hell of a skip, gentlemen! Good shit. Next is uh, floor number 26. This is when shit starts to get interesting. This is when you actually have to pay attention. Now, I'm gonna, since I'm on 26 and you wanna be safe, no more fierce loyalty. Zombie dog handler for the extra HP brings us up to 411k. Our toughness is 6 mil, 1.2 uh, or basically 1.3 million damage. Gonna put on the Black Thorns belt. DPS goes down a little bit, got more toughness. HP goes up to 527k. And we also have the ability to do 10 more damage to elites. So this is pretty much just going to be the end of the build, run of the mill shit. And if things get real too bad on damage, and I noticed that, I might actually put in the 50% uh, of all damage is taken. Instead of staggered and dealt to you over 3 seconds, I might replace that with the Smite Gem, but I don't think I'll need to. Hopefully we can skip to level 30, and then skip to 32, then skip to 34, and then skip to 36. We'll have to wait and see, though. With the Rhino Flailer build, like I said on Greater Rifts, just take your time, don't rush, don't die. Take your time, don't rush, don't die. That's the biggest advice I can give you. Do not rush. It's better to take your time and not die than to rush and die. Oops, see how I got stupid there? See, I died right there. See, I didn't need to do that. I didn't need to die. I got I got rushed. I just tried to keep running, and then I died. Luckily, it's at the beginning of the entrance, so nothing happens. I have to wait for my zombie dog to come, come off cool bill, uh, I'm sorry, come off uh, cooldown. Do not rush in greater risk. Just play safe. That's like the best advice I can get you. Yeah, I'm not doing an exploit right now. I'm just trying to play straight up. Just to showcase what happens and how things get crazy. Uh, basically, they keep killing their pets over and over again on higher level tier risk because when pets die, they give uh, rift progression. That's how they're doing it, from what I hear. Or maybe they're doing something else all entirely. Oh, uh, it might be a legacy skull skullgrass, maybe. <laughs> yes, yeah, this is mine from New Legendary Gems. What's in the purple box? Oh, that is. The trigger effect for the new legendary gem every time I land an attack and increases my attack speed. They just haven't put in any artwork for it. Basically, for every little stack you see, that's 2% attack speed increase. So at 10, I get 20% attack speed increase. Not ready yet. Now, some people might be looking at my meter and being like, oh my gosh, Debo, you're falling behind. I'm like, don't worry about that meter. Just focus on just consistently killing everything without dying. If you do that, everything else will be taken care of, and you see a little green circle above him, that means he's beating CC. And we don't have no problem kiting everything back. Hey, what's up, man? Good to see you guys. See how I'm gaining? Just play safe. Don't play crazy, just play safe. If you play safe, I guarantee you, you will pull out ahead in greater risk. Do not rush stuff. Yeah, I have an SMK, but I find that Rhino Flail is just progressing for me a lot safer and a lot easier on the higher tier rifts. As opposed to SMK, I will start using SMK again once I get my gym upgraded, upgraded to 50, so my pets don't die anymore. Yeah, I have the pet, I have that gym on right now with the smite gym and also the gym that makes it so that I get increased attack speed every time I land a hit by 2%. Well, that's 15% proc and damage. There we go. And we got Mr. Elite, pop the raffle. We see a little green circle above the Elite's head, that's why I love it. With the increased attack speed and so many toads, the Elites just stay confused for half the time and they don't attack my pets. Okay. 
Das ist And we're making some nice gains. Hopefully, we get a little bit more mobs. If we get that, we should be able to skip the floor 28 or 30 at least. Well, I'd say 30 at least. If we're lucky, maybe 31. Pop our gargantuan in a raffle or big bad voodoo in a raffle. We'll make short work of the elite. Stay out of harm's way. Nice. Pick up all the orbs and keep it moving. <sighs> Sorry, I'm yawning, guys. I'll have a quick sip, quick sip of my iced coffee in the fridge at, in between the next one. Yeah, hardcore greater risk will be pretty insane. Nice, consistent play, not rushing, playing safe. That is the way to do tier drift, guys. You don't want to rush. You make up more time in the long run just by playing safe and surviving as opposed to just trying to run everything super crazy fast and dying. Cannot stress that enough more. There we go. Yes, he will, but the nice thing about the zombie dog with the poison, he puts a stacking dot uh, that lasts, that does poison damage over three seconds on the target, right? Every time he hits the target, he doesn't refresh the dot, he puts another stack. So if my dog hits two times in one second, basically means he puts two stacks of the dot that will do damage over three seconds. So in one second, he'll put dot two dots on the monster, and they're both going to individually tick for uh, three seconds each. So in a long boss fights and rift bosses that have a lot of HP, it's really strong because it just keeps stacking so much poison damage on the boss. That damage adds up and it just totally annihilates the boss. That poison damage ticks for anywhere between, I've seen 17 up to 24 mil a tick and it ticks like that for three seconds. So let's just say it does 15 million poison damage. That means it does 45 million poison damage tick on top of the poison damage are the auto attacks it does so when it does an auto attack it leaves that dot that does that much damage over three seconds and that dot just stacks infinitely it does not refresh the pre-existing dot on it that and the fact that our adeline toads are poison that also helps out a lot as well too and our wave of mutilation is poison too and the fetishes even though they're physical they're just kind of there for tanking and stuff Excuse me yawning, guys. I need some of that coffee. There we go. No, the dots poison damage, even though they warded it very horribly inside the skill. It is, uh... Poison damage. Just like with the fire dogs, it is fire damage. Energy drink, do it. <laughs> Might have to. Needs more time. Yeah, if you have every other if you got every single piece of gear, yeah, it is worth gambling for SK if you have everything else, but if you don't, I wouldn't advise it. Yeah, I think I might only get 28, 29 with this one, guys. We'll see. The mob weren't looking that great. Because the poison dog is better for single targets. The fire dog is good for more AoE targets. So on the long Rift Guardian boss fights and the higher level tiered rifts, they have a shitload of HP. So taking the dog that does more damage with single target lead just makes a lot more sense. And this is getting very dangerous. Get out of the room. Oh, that was dangerous. See, 
on higher level toward tiered risk I wouldn't be doing this that's really dangerous that was way more dangerous than I needed to put myself in I did not need to do that higher tier levels you're gonna see me kiting a lot more because you do not want to die No, it doesn't make it incredibly it easy. It just makes you think a different way about how to play different builds and stuff. Yeah, tier risk, the mobs are RNG. If you keep getting like a lot of reflect, a lot of motor, a lot of fuck the mobs, that will significantly decrease your chance of progressing through a level. Unfortunately. I got my gargantuan up and my big bad voodoo. Let's do it to it. And we're gonna keep moving because this guy likes to do a lot of damage. Oh, get out of the range of the poison. Spirit walk, get that, boom. What do I get? 29, that's not bad. That's not a bad skip at all. That's pretty decent. Gloves, sword. Oh, screw that sword, screw that, screw that, screw that. Um, well, in all honesty, I don't think the patch is going to come out to September, October, because the console verse is coming out on August 19th, and I think they want to give it about a month at least for it to breathe and make some good sales, so probably the earliest, late September, uh, October will probably be optimistic, or probably be like we're in the middle ground, and then, uh, or worst case scenario, won't be available till after BlizzCon, I think they might actually even just put out all the content they have now, not enable tiered seasons until January so they can kind of stretch the longevity of this patch out. I'll be right back. Gonna get some coffee, guys. I waited 1500 years for this. Should I return to my slumber?
I feel great. I feel energized. I got black iced coffee. It is Hawaiian coffee. Or the Kulu Kulu I don't know what they call it. Kona coffee. That's what it is. No cream, just sugar and black coffee. I feel perky. I feel great. Let's do floor number 29. All right, let's do this. You guys ready? I'm ready. I know you guys are ready. Okay. This is when shit starts getting real. This is when you have to actually start playing very consistently. This is where you need to actually watch what you're doing so you don't die on stupid shit. Conservative, soft, easy, like safe play wins in greater tiered rips. Do not rush. Play very safe. I got a elite right here, so I'll cast Raffle Protector with Gargantuan. Good job. Needs more time. <laughs> Why is it gonna be black coffee? <laughs> you sir are funny. Sorry if I don't talk much, guys. I'm in my focus mode. I need to focus so I don't die to any kind of one-hit shots or kills or anything like that. And like I said, you just get into your little rhythm. And you just stay back a safe distance. And then the CC from the top, frogs and all the pets working together. Kill leads no problem. Little games, that's huge on these higher level tournaments, or higher level rifts. Just playing it safe. Hey, what's up, fucking beast? Nanchuan. Now, when they do have reflect, you're going to have to be careful at higher levels, but at this level, I can kind of get away with auto-attacking. And with the toads, the toads keep them CC pretty much, so they didn't cast too many of the uh, mortars. At this pace, we should be able to skip about two or three levels. So we should end up on probably uh, 32, maybe if we're lucky. 31 is probably going to be what we're going to end up at. Uh, I don't know. I think I'm going to cook some fish and potatoes today with some uh, spinach and some asparagus. Delicious, tasty food. Healthy food. But you see how they stay crowd control for so long? It's because the rhino play they're addling toads is so strong versus the elites. It makes it so they can't even do anything. This is a greater tier rift, and greater tier rifts, yes, the rift guardian is the only thing that drops loot. And regular rifts, everything drops loot. No, you should keep looking for your SMK. It just takes time, bro. Just the biggest thing about SMK is don't look for SMK. Just think of it as if you're just basically stocking up on crafting mats and materials for the next big patch. Don't focus about the SMK. Because every weapon you buy, if you're using blood shards, hey, at least you can use it for craftable mats, you know? Yeah, my Rhino's 2300. I've seen some that get 24. I've seen one that's been 2500. Crazy level rolls. But 
The patch is far from refined. They still got a lot of issues to fix with the gems. And once they balance the gems, then they got to balance the exploiting. And then after they balance the exploiting, then they got to balance the gem based on which one's stronger than the others. And then they got to get all the classes, like, you know, built correct and right and functioning well. And then after that, they still have to test seasons. So we still got a lot more to test. It's going to be a long time before they get it down. If they release a half ass patch, that would piss off a lot of people. They got a lot more they got to do. Of course you should stock up on Keystone Rifts and then just get used to running T6 so you can get your greater Rift Shards. That's actually a very smart idea. These are always nice. Speed is so good. Conduits I kind of don't like because they seem to be light rusted, but I like speed fire rush. Well, I think testing season will be really easy after they get everything else balanced. See, that was playing stupid. I should not be playing like that. I should just be sitting back throwing toads. That stuff on the next couple levels will get you killed instantly. And you don't want to die. Only time it's acceptable to die is when you're close to an entrance where you just came in. No, fetishes can't proc gems, unfortunately. It'd be nice, but, I mean, that'd be a little overpowered. <laughs> it's elite taking some while, but like I said, you're not rushing. You're just trying to play safe. Don't want to die. Safe strats, win the game on higher tier risks. Rushing will just get you killed. And never be afraid to run away or kite from a mob that's too much to handle. All right, we're gonna keep it moving. Ooh, uh oh, this is where we might die. No, we're good. So I need a spirit wall, I'll cast my raffle protector, and now I need to kind of start shimmy shuffling while throwing frogs. Hopefully, some of these frogs will confuse them, so they stop casting. Yeah, I got one crowded. Now you see how they when they're when they're confused, they don't throw mortars. That's why I like the random filler build with the adling toads because it's really good crowd control. Excellent. Griff Guardian. We don't got a raffle up, but we do got Big Bad Voodoo. Unfortunately, Alien Toes doesn't work on the Rift Guardians. But remember, the, the Poison Dog, every time he hits, he's putting that stack and poison debuff on the monster. Not to mention with the uh, with our follower, she has Furnace, so she's depleting his HP by a lot as well, too. This is a really good run. We should be able to skip a couple levels. 
We got to 32. Very good skip. So hopefully we can skip 32 to 36. And now we'll head back to town. Yeah, luck with density does win in rifts. I have gotten some bad rifts with very bad density, and I've I've won emo and I've raged out on the stream actually over it because like it's just bad RNG. Oh hey, this is supposed to roll a new affix for the Crusaders. Let's see. Well, maybe because I'm a witch doctor, it won't show up. Nah, it doesn't look like it. Let's close this down. <coughs> Get the floor 32. Thirty-four or higher with double unity ring combo in the follower shit, you're still gonna die horribly. So, like I said, at these levels, it's better to have nice, consistent damage combined with survivability. You don't want to just run into everything and just die, and you want to play very safe. Safe strategies win. Being safe wins. Playing crazy doesn't. You want to play safe. Very, 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 very safe. Okay, if you guys are ready, we're going to do this. Yeah, Poison Dog, every time that Poison puts his dot on the target, that Poison Dot stacks, so it keeps adding more stacks of dots. Yeah, I'm using Legendary Gems right now. If you guys are wondering about my Legendary Gems right now, it is... I'm using 25% chance hit increase for your attack speed. To, it, this basically, every time I hit, has a chance for 25% to give me a 2% attack speed for 3 seconds. Stacks up to 10 times, so I can get 20% attack speed increase. And then also, at the max level, cooldown reduction, which will be awesome for Big Bad Voodoo and uh, Raffle Protector. I have one that, of course, increases my critical chance of my pets by 20%. That's going to be pretty much mandatory any pet build. And then when I get to level 50, it's going to be pets are unkillable. And then, of course... 50% chance on hit to smite nearby enemies of 1,000% weapon damage, which is working out pretty well. 32. We're going to play this safe. We're not going to go crazy. And we're going to pass this. Oh, no, my gear needs repairing. Well, I'll worry about it in a little bit. Got an elite mortar molten, so we want to kind of get close to this guy, but not really. The reason why we want to get close is because if I do Adeling Toads with that 20% increase attack speed, you see how he stays CC'd? He didn't cast any mortars. That's why I really like the uh, Rhino Flare at higher levels. CC is very nice. Uh, the gentleman to level up first is probably the. Uh, in all honesty, probably the one that made the attack speed one so I can... It's because at the higher level, every time you hit, it has a chance to reduce a cooldown, your cooldowns by 2%. That's really good. So I think the way it's going to work is it reduces your cooldown by 2%. And so it just, it will get, at some point, you'll just keep resetting your cooldown over and over again. Basically, like it's an overpowered SMK. So I look forward to using it. And these elites, I am being careful because they got fire chains and they got electricity. But as long as I can keep them CC with the toads, it's usually not too much problem. And I do have wave of mutilation, which is nice. There we go. They don't deal me too much damage. Higher levels, they definitely will be hurting a lot more. But we're doing pretty good. We're getting a little bit. We're getting some good gains. After you fail a rift, a magical gem guy will appear and then he'll upgrade your gems. But that's only when you fail a rift, not when you succeed in a rift. So like I said guys, we're just playing a calm, cool, collective strategy. We're not going to rush shit. We're just playing very safe. Safe wins the game. Not showboating, not showing off. I don't know why this guy keeps running away, but he did give us an orb, so that's cool. Ooh, I don't like those guys. But since we got the uh, Adeling Toads, they're cc so they're not jumping around doing their power fist moves. We're making some good gains, good time. When I talk about gains, a gain is basically anything that's above the line where, you know, the timer's on. That's called a gain. So as long as we play safe and sure, 
We'll get some good gains. We'll get ahead. That's exactly what we want. Just focus on playing, just putting yourself behind your pets, not doing anything stupid. You'll get ahead, and anybody can get a high tier riff ranking. Yeah, there is a bug right now when your pets die in the greater rifts, it, it counts as progress. But uh, I think that's going to get us up a couple of more floors. But for the realistic, the realness of it, I'm not just going to sit there and just have my pets dying over and over. I'm actually doing the dungeon just so I can just show people how it works in higher levels. And you can see how much the monsters do damage. See, if this was 34, 35, I'd be dead right now. So I got to watch out for those kind of monsters. I should have had a spirit walk ready, but that's okay. We're doing all right. Certain monsters you have to look out for. Oh, port to town and one shot everything? Yeah, I'm not running that gym right now, but that's good to know, though. That'll be the new terminology. Are you getting some good gains? Are you getting good gains? <laughs> it's that greater rift talk, right? That greater rift meta, bro. Are you getting good gains? Are you gaining? <laughs> Do you game, bro? All I do is game. Here's the problem with the build. Reflect. Now I'm going to test the waters. Hopefully they don't do too much damage for me. But on higher levels, Reflect is a killer. So I might actually have to switch out Wave of Mutilation for the uh, uh, Horrify. So I can get the 100% ar armor increase. So I, Because armor mitigates Reflect damage, if you didn't know. Unless they changed it, which I don't believe they did last time I checked. Alright, that went really well. Getting some fantastic gains. We're doing amazing. We might actually skip to 34, 36. Oops, Spirit Walk. Like I said, you gotta be ready for these guys. If that was level 35 or 36, these guys can combo you. They'll land on you, stun you, do their damage, and they'll do their power fist, and you'll be dead. Of course, if you're running the gym where it splits 50% of your damage over 3 seconds, it, do it won't do that. But they still do hurt. Now, I do see an elite, so I'm going to go ahead and pop my raffle. And I'm taking a lot of poison damage, so I'm just going to just keep tossing toads from afar. And I'm just going to be kiting, because the toads will actively seek out the target. Cast Wave of Mutilation. He really can't do any of his elite shit, because, like I said, he's getting CC'd to death. And we're just going to play it safe. Got to get those gains. Good. Very straightforward play. Nothing fancy. I get skipped to 34 maybe 35 maybe 35 I think maybe 36 wishful thinking 30 36 yeah the reason why I have the attack speed is because I have the gym that basically it triggers every time I hit a landed attack it increases my attack speed by uh, two percent stacks up to 20 percent so with 10 I can't show you but I got an attack speed of basically 2.7 attacks per second Big Bad Voodoo gets up to close to 3 attacks per second. That's why it's so strong with Rhino Flailer. And then if you actually put it with the one that increases the primary damage of the Toads, that's fantastic. But uh, it's really nice. Oh, so this one's Mortar. I'm going to play this one a little bit safe, and I'm going to kind of stay out the room. I'm going to be dodging around here. Hopefully the Toads can confuse and do their job. We're looking pretty decent. Don't got Big Bad Voodoo pop. Oh, got it. Great. Rift Guardian. And we got a pretty easy one. So now, what I gotta watch for is dodging everything. Y using my pots when I get low and spirit walking when I need to. Do not use spirit walker pots unless you have to. And you always want to stay moving. So 
if he does try to cast an ability where you're taking damage, you're automatically already moving so you don't have to worry about it. You just want to watch out for stuff like that. Some bosses, especially like the Butcher, you want to keep moving. And he's ki You actually see that? He killed my zombie dog. So I had to resummon another one. But it's okay because we're still producing the ones with the fetishes. Okay, I don't have a pot, I don't have a spirit walk, so I need to be careful. And looks like we'll get this guy no problem. My zombie dog is getting kind of low. I do got raffle protector to help finish him off, though. But like I said, at this point, this is when your pets start dying. And this is why Rhino Flare is so nice, because you can keep producing those fetishes as long as you land damage. Awesome! We're on floor 36, gentlemen. Good jobs worked out pretty well and the reason why he died so quick is because we have her with the furnace and she does damage based upon the HP of the target so the furnace made it possible for that to burn him down pretty quick um, and just in general man just the smiting helps and also the extra damage the attack speed increase and then also the, the critical chance for the pets Well, honestly, if they fix the pet progression bar, I think I will cap out at level 34. In all honesty, I think everybody should be capping around 34, 35. And the curter iteration of the game and how everything is with the pet progression, realistically, if you play legitimately with the pet progression bar when your pets die, maybe 36, 37 is normal. But everybody's kind of abusing right now. What I'm just trying to do is show you guys the Rhino Flayther build and just kind of talk to you about the new meta because as you saw my zombie dog was dying and with the star metal build if your fetishes die you can't reset so I'm just trying to showcase this build that everybody can have I mean it's easy to get the three piece ogdles you can get a necklace the belts easy the boots are easy to get eventually I want to switch out to the ice climber boots and a different necklace but for the most part this build is not hard to get the hardest part is getting the rhino fl well probably the tasker and theos in the rhino flailer Jerome it's not too hard to get it's only five blood shard rifts per Level 36. Let's do this. Yeah, I hope so too. But if they reset the leaderboards, I'm going to have to find another Unity Ring because I found Unity Ring on PTR and they reset everything. That's going to screw me over. Or maybe they just can reset just the leaderboards. So like I said, nothing fancy here. Do not try to do nothing fancy. Just play fucking safe. If you play safe, you'll make gains. Gains are basically anything that's past the timer. Play safe. You got a good attack speed, you got good crowd control. Oh, I didn't even summon my Zog. You guys didn't tell me to summon my Zog. Shame on you, chat. There you go. Uh, I would get the necklace that makes it so I can absorb arcane damage. So if I go versus the arcane beams or jailer, I will get healed instead of died. Or frozen. Frozen's really bad. I would rather have the frozen one. So that when I get frozen or hit with that cold damage, I'll get healed instead of die. Yeah, there we go. We're making some good gains already. We're looking level 37 strong, people. Maybe if we're lucky, get some good RNG through 38. Okay. This is when shit gets crazy. I'm going to step into battle, and I'm going to try to dance. <laughs> this is when shit gets stupid. So you're going to try to dance, and you spirit walk. With our attacks, but we got some good CC going on. Wave of mutilation. Oh, see? Reflect damage. So what I might actually have to do is I might actually have to peep out of town and actually use horrify and actually since I'm so close I actually will back to town right click horrify uh frightening aspect most definitely uh one more thing I'm gonna switch zombie dogs to right click because I'd rather have my horrify on two gives me more control of my fingers so now I can control the mob even more and now, if he does reflect damage, it doesn't matter. Because Horrify gives me the 100% increased armor. And now I'm not going to take as much damage because I have Horrify. Not to mention the fact that Horrify is pretty much on a low cooldown. Oh, he got a heal. Got to play this careful. And, oh, Horrify. Raffle Protector. Spirit Walk. Got to keep dodging. Got to keep moving. I got to re-Horrify soon. Horrify again. CCs him a little bit. I'm doing it mostly for the armor game, but I think I'm doing too much. I'm taking too much damage from Reflect. That Reflect is like owning me up right now. That's the only bad thing about Rhino Flailer build is the Reflect. 
Fortify. I'm gonna wait. Okay, there we go. And I know this seems crazy, but this is just what you have to do. Oh, horrify, horrify. Ew, I'm taking too much reflect damage. Uh, gotta keep moving, gotta keep moving. This seems kind of slow, but this is just at the rate it goes at the higher levels. It's just something you gotta deal with, unfortunately. I'm waiting for my potion to get off cooldown. Okay. Put some more damage in. I got another raffle protection. He's coming in. And this is where RNG really steps in. I just hope I don't get any more reflect monsters, but Horrify definitely does help reflect. As long as the Horror flies up, I can do damage when he reflects. Oh, dodging. Dodging. Horrify. There we go. Down to one. Horrify. Get the armor back up. And like I said, the armor mitigates the, the reflect damage. That's why we're using it. Just die. <laughs> Yay, died. And we got some good games on that. It's just a small game, but, you know, that's okay. We'll make it up. So we'll make it up on these trash mobs. Get our time back. Hopefully we don't get any more reflects. And we're only going to pop Raffle Protector with Slam Dance on, on uh, Elites because we want to burn them down fast. Here's another one. Horrify. Let's see if I can get good. Uh-oh. I got too close. This is, might be the death of me right here. I got a potion. I'll be okay. I just got to dodge. <laughs> you got to get good at stutter stuff. Then you go in. You horrify. Horrify CCs them. It's all about keeping the mob cc And I still got a spirit walk. So I'm okay. I'm on a spirit walk out of here to this side. I still got my potion. And this guy is a pushover. As long as we keep up that horrify and CCing and the Todd, the, the toads with ailing toads, we got this. No problem. I don't even have to pop a sweat potion on this motherfucker. There we go. Good job. See? Just safe, safe play. Just playing safe. I know it doesn't look as flashy or entertaining, but it, you, it just when you get to this level, just starts, just stuff just starts to hit really bad. It just, it hurts. And then you can use Horrify whenever you like, and it gives you that. You want to use Horrify as often as possible because it gives you that damage reduction or the 100% increased armor, which is really nice. So as long as we don't die, we keep at a good pace and we get some nice mobs, we should have no problem getting to floor 37. After that, I can't guarantee anything. This is where Arcane Necklace would come in handy. This is where we're going to get fucked over by RNG a little bit. So as soon as I can, I'm gonna spirit walk back up the stairs, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave. <laughs> That's too much. I gotta wait for my potion. I can't attack because oh, dead. I think he has jailer too, right? Yeah. See, that's what I'm talking about. If you had the arcane necklace, that would have healed me to full instead of killing me. But since we get to this floor, this is when things get crazy. Now, some people would say skip the elite. I'm gonna try not to skip him because I want to kill him and get the gains. And by gains, I mean by the ores. But this is where things start getting a little silly. So we're going to go back over to where he was at. Hopefully we can kite him and kill him down. We'll see. I don't know. If I can get one elite, that's fine. But at this level, when you start getting two, that's a problem. That is a big problem. And he does Jailer. So I got to try to keep myself at full. It's a fucked up balancing app. But this guy doesn't have a lot of HP. I think we can get him. So we're just throwing toads and kiting. Keep the armor up for the reflect damage we're going to possibly take. Now I got to get away. Far away, far away. Because if he jailers right now, I'm dead. I so I have to wait. I got to wait. Horrify. Ooh, I got a potion right there. Oh, see? Jailer, one shot. That's what I tell people. Like, this is one. This is the point where Blizzard kind of needs to rebalance it. Because no one likes to die. Or Because this is why I say, like, if you had that necklace, that becomes another item where it's mandatory. It doesn't become fun anymore. You need the one, you need to maybe get the Jailer one that basically reduces the damage. Or heals you. Because Arcane is a killer. See, now if I had that necklace, the Elite probably would have been dead by now. And I'd have been on the next Elite. So eventually what's going to happen, I think, is you're going to have the Arcane necklace and the the cold necklace and when you come to these monsters you're just gonna go back to town switch and come back which I don't think anybody is gonna like doing because it kind of slows down the gameplay and it makes it kind of like uh, kind of cheesy 
But if you want to get to top rank, you're going to have to do little strats like that because Jailer is a little ridiculous. And keep in mind, I have the Unity combo on. If I did not have the Unity combo and the Ukupan Serpent, could you imagine what you would have to do? You would automatically be dead. I cannot do that. So now I'm starting to fall behind because shit's just getting crazy. I just got a bad elite. So like I said, at certain levels, it really does come down to RNG. Now what I could have run is actually I could have run physical and that would have gave my fetishes more damage and then just run physical and have the dog on the absorption and that actually would have been another 10% damage mitigation which would have been nice. I think we have one more elite. I think we killed them both. Okay, good job. We're, we're behind though. What's this one? Avenger Nightmares. Oh, this is fine. I just got to watch out for the Orbiter, but this is totally doable. This guy's not that. We'll, we'll, we'll actually, we might actually gain some on this one. As long as I get careful of that Orbiter. Drop that Gargantuan right there. Horrify. And we horrify because when they're CC, they don't do the crazy things that they do. Very nice. Very nice. Very straightforward. That's an easy elite. If you get a bunch of elites like that at high level, you have no problems. We, so we gained up a little bit. I don't know if we're going to beat the timer, though. We'll see. Hopefully, I do. I at least want to get... If I get 36, I'll be happy. I think if I don't get any crazy more elites, I can catch back up. Because the Rift Guardian will die fast, I think, anyway. So hopefully I can make my gains back. Cool. So now I'm going to make a quick trip back to town. I'm going to switch back to uh, Piranhas, Wave of Mutilation. Head right back in. I hate doing that and losing a couple seconds, but I mean, you do what you got to do, right? Because now I got the wave of mutilation back. Oh, but see, now I got a reflect mob. Oh, I screwed myself. I screwed myself. Oh, and I took off my dog. See, I fucked up. So I got to go back to town. I got to put on the right thing, which is actually put the zombie dog on with the rabbit dog. I got wave of mutilation, but this is going to hurt me horribly because they got reflect. So now I got to watch when I cast toads and they got mortar because that's gonna hurt me badly I can't get too close because those guys will be the end of me mortars not too bad the reflect damage is what I'm worried about right now because the reflect damage is going to kill me so I actually have to watch to cast toads and then stop as soon as I see some reflect damage starting now, right now, I have to stop because they're reflecting right now. So I can't do anything. And now they stop reflecting, so now I can throw out some more damage. And I think the only reason my bar is progressing is because of the pet glitch. So as soon as I see them start reflecting, I have to stop. And I'm looking, and they're not reflecting, and I have to stop. And I die. You see what I'm saying? So this is where it gets kind of frustrating. And then you just look at Blizzard like, what the fuck? How are you guys balancing this shit, right? Uh-oh, that was real bad. Oh, it's game over. I think I, I picked the wrong option. Oh, no, this is the first level. Okay, well. And then one option is, is actually skipping some mobs. But I don't like doing that because, to me, I, I don't view that as being realistic. I don't think I should have to skip mobs. I think at a higher level, it's going to make a difference. That you shouldn't have to get the mobs and shit. But I don't think I'm going to make this time, unfortunately. I died too much on two elites. I don't think I'm going to make it. And if I do make it, it's only because my pets are dying, which makes the, the rift thing go up. But in realisticness, I'd be way behind. So we'll just skip that elite. Uh-oh, what do we got? Frozen Jailer Electified? I am so dead. There goes the Jailer hit. Oh, Spirit Walk, Spirit Walk, Spirit Walk, Spirit Walk. Get away, get away, get away. Wave of mutilation. Dead. Jailer. You see what I'm saying? Like, 
that's the bad thing. If you do not, ha that's why I tell people you need to get the Countess Julio necklace because that would have healed me and I would have been alive. So Blizzard needs to revisit balancing Jailer because it's kind of shitty that like an attack you can't dodge, you take damage. Now like reflect damage and Jailer, they're gonna have to redo. But like mortar, they don't have to redo. I feel that if you're skillful enough, you can dodge most of the mortar attacks, but you can't dodge Jailer. You're gonna take Jailer. So the depressing thing is, if they don't fix it, then it makes it another legendary that you actually have to have. Because I have Unity combo. Oh, there goes Fro there go Frozen. Frozen right there. Died to Frozen. It's just, it's just really fucked up in balance at top tier. That's what I'm saying. Like, Jade Set would be really nice right here. Because Jade Set can just go in and do a couple Jade hits and everything's dead. This is where Pet starts to suffer. But I, hopefully they get it balanced. I, I do. Do I think they'll have it per, per, like perfectly balanced? Probably not. But I can hope. See jailer, boom, dead, dead. Double jailer, you're dead. That's why you have to have the countess's necklace so the jailer heals you. If you can't get hit by jailer, you're you're dead. You can't do anything. I'm running double unity combo with the follower and Ukapi and serpent for the mitigation. And each of those guys can cast Jailer, so when they all double cast Jailer, you die. You do not double Jailer. Dead. You see how... And like a lot of people actually argue and say, oh, that's the challenge of the Greater Rifts. I said, people don't like mechanics like this. So... People, I think Blizzard needs to redo the mechanics. I think people would be okay about running out of time and the monsters having a lot of health. But when you start getting one shot on silly mechanics, it's just stupid. Now, keep this in mind. If you don't have the double unity ring, you cannot do this. You would be dead. I could take the first jailer, but when the second jailer comes in, I die. That is the unfortunateness of this. And this is where RNG comes into favor. Now, if I didn't have this many mods, I have Jailer. Who knows? I could have advanced to the next level and got the 37. But the, currently, the way it stands is double Jailer's a bitch. <laughs> like, if it's Jailer on the one mob or it's one yellow champion pack or whatever, that's fine. He's only going to jail you at once. When you have the blue uh, elite mobs, when each of them have their own ability and they all can Jailer, they're just going to triple Jailer your ass and die. See, now I die again. Well, Ice Climbers help for the Frozen, yes, but you only mitigate some cold damage. You need the Absorb Arcane Damage Necklace. It's mandatory. So if I wanted to make a run for top tier build, top 5, I'd have to get the Countess Necklace that basically mitigates or heals you for arcane damage and I'd also would have to have the frozen one I'd have to have both because if I have both then I could switch okay I got a frozen mob go back to town put on the frozen absorb one and then if you get like a frozen jailer mob you're just fucked cuz then you know you're gonna get one shot it yeah illusionary boots to help but I just don't like it for new players it just makes them feel like they're like ah oh, damn it's like no one likes to get one shot off mechanics like this. This is not enjoyable. When you get one Jailered and it takes your health down so low, nobody likes that. Everybody gets frustrated. So Blizzard needs to fix it. Players don't mind. If if, the, if a player says, ah, damn, I didn't have enough damage to finish this rift, they're okay with that. But if a player keeps getting one shot of Jailer or some shit like that, that's when people get frustrated. That's when people get upset. That's is not fun anymore. When you don't, when you die and you can't dodge it or use your own skills to do it, you get mad. If you die to Mortar, you could say, well, I could have dodged that. If you die to Orbiter, well, I could have dodged the Lightning. That's my fault. But when you have a spell that hits everything on screen and it just, you can't dodge it, that's Blizzard's fault. Well, I could change the Jade. That is something, but it does take seconds. But I could finna go to J town. I don't really want to do that, though. And I think that's kind of unfair. You when you go into a rift, you should just kind of rock with what builds you have, honestly. I don't even think you should be allowed to go back to town or change the gear. They should just have a repair guy inside of town. So I lost this rift, so we're going to go ahead and kill these couple more monsters and get the elite, the rift boss to spawn. Then hopefully the guy who's supposed to show up will actually uh, repair or upgrade my gems. 
Like I said, if Blizzard said, hey, we gave you Witch Doctors a spell, when you horrify, it gives you like, uh, for the next 30 seconds, it gives you immunity or it gives you half damage reduction to arcane and other elements. That's cool. That means I might have to use that ability for this level. But even right now, I'm fighting Izul right now, basically, or the Rift Guardian that's based off Izul. He does a lot of frost shit. So if I don't have Ice Climbers, I'm taking unnecessary damage. And now, at a higher tier Rift, I'm also going to need the necklace that makes it so that if I do get hit by uh, frozen or cold attacks, I get healed. So right now, I would go back to town, I would switch out, and that's what I would put on. Because he does cold damage. Because once you get to a higher level, eventually his cold damage is going to start one-shotting. And that's why I think Blizzard needs to tone down the damage and just make it more based on can you deal enough damage to kill this boss as opposed to we're just going to make this motherfucker hit so hard that you're just going to die and wonder what the hell happened. So now I get trapped. Escape. Now if he flash freezes, I might die. And he just killed my pet. But like I said, with Rhino Flail, you can still generate a little bit of fetishes, which is better than nothing. See? Charge. Uh, now if he flash freezes right now, does that AoE freeze shit? I'll die. So I don't want to cast my dogs yet because I'll die. I'm just waiting to get my put my health back up. See, charge me, I'm dead. Well, you can't allow people to switch items in bag because then you're putting the strain of you have to have multiple sets of gear. Can you imagine if you're changing gears on every single mob and stuff like that? That doesn't make the game play play smoothly. When people want to get into tier drifts, they want to get in, they want to kill stuff, they don't want to have to worry about it, they just want to focus on casting spells, dodging, and doing what they do. The last thing they want to do is micromanage their inventory. So now it's like, not only do you have to have the gear, you have to have multiple sets of gear, which is mandatory, and then you have to switch the gear while you're playing. No one wants to do that, it's not fun, it's not entertaining, it's not fluid. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying make the greater, I mean, I would put a more emphasis less on damage. Make the monsters have more HP, so more, it may, maybe it comes down to, you know, dealing the damage or something, you know what I'm saying? As opposed to just making it so that, oh, the monsters just hit so fucking hard that you have to wear this gear or you get one shot. That's all I'm saying. Like, he could do less damage, double his HP, make it crazy. I'd rather lose it, my, me not being able to do damage as opposed to me getting one shot on shit. But we'll see what Blizzard's gonna do. So we topped that at 35. I can't complain. We got a little bad RNG, but it happens. And then our pets are dying. Oh, combo dead again. See that? Right there, it's not really fun. Well, the whole point of the gear swap, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me because it's gonna make a lot of players unhappy. You're gonna have to have the gear, so... Basically, when you get to a certain gear limit, you're basically going to be behind in gear, not because you're unskillful, it's just because maybe a certain gear hasn't dropped for you, so you can't get a certain damage mitigation that other players had. I don't like that. I don't like the fact that people will be able to outrank you just because they got lucky with one piece of gear that you didn't. That's why I've been saying they need to put it like on like a system, so that every time... What they need to do is they need to make it so that when you clear a rift, let's say you cap rifts at level 40, you get to level 40, you clear it, they give you another greater rift shard, you come back and you do it again. And then it at gives you like, let's say you've got to level 40, here's a million experience, here's another greater rift shard, go do it again. Then at the end of the bar, they show your portrait, you start at level 1, they give you a million experience, do 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 you level up, you're at level 2. And that's how they rank you on the ladder. So maybe... If you don't play a lot, but you can get to high level tiered, you can rank up. So you could have a, you could have it like an experience leveling system where the higher the rift you go, it goes to your experience for your ladder account. And every five levels, you get new portraits, new items, new skins, and then everybody can rank against each other. So you're not sitting there. And let's say you have all the best gear, and another person has all the best gear. Let's say you get the greatest RNG of your life. You get to floor 38. People are like, how did you get to floor 38? Oh, well, I got really good RNG. I got, like, no reflect mobs and no jailers. Oh, shit. So now that guy's going to be ranked number one for the rest of the season. He doesn't have to play anymore. And everybody else has to have to get... They have to replicate his luck. So and to make it more skill-based, 
just make it so that if you get to level 40 you get a free greater rear, a tier roof shard and if you clear it really fast they give you bonus experience and you and they give you experience to your account and you level up and whoever has the most experience or the highest level that's how the ranking system is you have your top 50 top 50 once you're in top 50 you don't get any more bonus experience you just get basic setup experience if you're in the top 50 in the world if you don't play often you get experience decay and it deranks you so if a player can get to level 40 uh, all the time because he has better gear and he had better uh, RNG than another player, the player who doesn't have RNG, he can just simply keep playing as a lot more riffs and gaining more experience and catch up to the guy who just happened to get better RNG. They need a system how they did like in Warcraft 3 for their ladder, but put it towards Diablo. I think that would be the best thing they can do. Because at least... It doesn't make it so that if one guy gets the fucking greatest run of his life, he still has to play on the ladder. He still has to run risks to keep his experience, to keep his levels up. And then you can get players incentives and shit like that. Like if you hit level 25 for this season on the Greater Rift tiered ladder system, even if you don't finish number one, they give you a real cool portrait or a cool skin. And then down the line, your friends are like, where'd you get that cool skin for your Crusader? Oh, back in the day, I got rank. I got to level 25 in the Greater Tier Rift ladder season and they gave it to me. They need to do that. You know, they need to do it like that. Yeah, arena season. They need to get make it so that you keep wanting the player. The players on top have to keep playing. If they don't play, then they get penalized and other players can catch up to them. And the way you can do it is if you're not in top 50, let's say you're a person that can't play a lot, but you consistently do very well for yourself. Then what they can actually do is be like, okay, if you're not in top 50, if you get to floor 30, maybe at floor 30, Every on um, floor 30 and every level past floor 30, they say this, hey, you're past level 30 and you're not in top 50. You're on floor 30 rift. If you risk all your experience on the next rift and you beat it, we'll give you bonus experience. And that bonus experience can help people that don't play a lot rank up and catch up to the top 50. But if you lose, maybe you don't get any of the bonus experience. Maybe you lose half your experience or something like that. So... It has a mechanic so that when players um, are not in the top 50 in the world, they can get catapulted up if they're good at consistently clearing rifts, which showcases skill. Maybe they don't have the best gear, but they can get to a certain level. They can clear the rifts well, and if they risk their rift points or risk their experience, then they can get a boost. And then once you get in the top 50, then you can't get any more boosts. You just got to keep grinding out the levels. So you can aid the people that can't play a lot because they got work and shit like that. But then you can also keep it interesting for the players who just want to maybe rank up really quick. Maybe your mid-ladder season, maybe you rank up a Barbarian real quick, right? And then you want to play your Barbarian and you're good and you get them geared up in a two or three weeks. You're behind everybody else, but in two or three weeks you get this all gear set. You get up to level 30 and then you start clearing and you start doing well for yourself. So then you can kind of start ranking up and catching back up but once you make it a top 50 then it cuts off and you actually have to just play because no one wants to see anybody who just gets one really good rng run for the whole season and then that guy is number one he doesn't have to play anymore and everybody for the rest of the season has to play catch up i don't think that's fair i think players should have to keep playing on the ladder